If you heard a lawmaker spent taxpayer money on projects he personally benefited from, you'd probably say that's wrong, if not worse. But then you're not a member of the House Ethics Committee. Here's another story that begins with an ordinary citizen who stood up to power. This area is known as California's Inland Empire. Dotted with small cities like Riverside and San Bernardino, it's where Southern California's warehouses, citrus farms, and small support businesses are located. It is also where, six years ago, Art Castle retired from his job as a warehouse manager and decided to put his newfound free time to good use by researching local politics. That is what brought him to this area just off Interstate 215 in Paris, California. It's near March Air Force Base, which was hit by massive budget cuts in 1996. But Castle heard there was a move to redevelop the area using federal money. He suspected that politically well-connected people might be getting sweetheart deals. I drew a circle around March Air Force Base that was about a mile wide. And the very second property I hit and was belonging to Ken Calvert. California Congressman Republican Ken Calvert. Congressman Calvert and a partner paid $550,000 in May of 2005 to purchase this four-acre piece of property near the downsized Air Force Base. Now, for the most part, there's nothing wrong with a U.S. Senator or a member of the House of Representatives continuing to engage in business transactions even while serving in Congress. But what if that congressman uses his power to benefit not only his business, but his own bank account? Well, that's precisely what Art Castle suspected that Congressman Ken Calvert was somehow doing when he bought up this land. Nothing has ever moved in here. Art first voiced his suspicions at a local meeting. He then called a government watchdog group in Washington, D.C., whose expertise was in researching earmarks. They were intrigued with what Castle had dug up. Representative Calvert came into Congress as a real estate developer. Brian Alexander is the president of Taxpayers for Common Sense, that privately funded nonpartisan corruption watchdog group. He came in with a background as a speculator, and once he got into Congress, he started earmarking transportation and infrastructure projects for his district. Alexander soon discovered that Calvert had earmarked an interchange at I-15 that would connect it to I-215. It would turn the 16-mile-long road connecting the two interstates into a major highway. And that road would run right by Calvert's property. He earmarked an $8 million road near that parcel of land. That was in August 2005, just three months after Calvert purchased the land. And into that exact same 2005 transportation funding bill, Calvert added another earmark for $1.5 million of taxpayer money. It was meant to fund a redevelopment zone adjacent to the Air Force Base that would give businesses tax and other financial incentives for moving to the area. Just six months after the earmarks were approved, he and his partner took the property they purchased for $550,000 and sold it for $985,000 a 79% profit. So in less than a year, he had a $450,000 profit. We requested an interview with Representative Calvert. He declined, but sent us an editorial from Southern California's Press Enterprise, which covered the controversy sparked by his real estate deal. The newspaper relied on a local watchdog group, the Center for Governmental Studies, which concluded that his profit was a reasonable increase for that area. But we tracked down organization President Robert Stern ourselves. He told us he spent no more than 10 minutes on his analysis and seemed bewildered that anyone was using it to defend Calvert's deal. I did find there was no conflict, but I think that uh, he should probably be using a, a, a better assessor, a better source than I am. Why do you think he did? Because I'm probably the only person who said that what he did was not wrong. Maybe on that land deal, but a much more powerful group, the U.S. Congress, would have his back the next time he requested taxpayer money that would help his California real estate interests. This train platform is set to be rebuilt into a major transportation hub linking bus and rail service throughout this region. 
It'll be paid for using $5.6 million of your taxpayer money that Congressman Ken Calvert earmarked for the project in 2007. Now, of course, it doesn't look like much today, but when it's completed, it will likely make this area boom. And once again, directly benefiting from a multi-million dollar Ken Calvert earmark will be none other than Ken Calvert himself. Calvert says local government officials asked him to earmark the transportation hub. But Ryan Alexander says the real issue is that within a two-mile radius of that proposed hub, Calvert himself owns seven properties. They include strip malls, restaurants, and a small office building. There's no arguing that he had no idea that he would benefit from this. In fact, in this case, Calvert admitted to it. Knowing that another earmark near his property would surely spark additional charges of self-dealing, he laid the issue right at the feet of his fellow members of Congress. He came here to the House Ethics Committee and asked for their ruling on the earmark that he flat out said would raise the value of his real estate holdings. The committee's decision? No problem. It was okay for Calvert to allocate government funds that benefit his property as long as other people profited as well. The controversy over earmarks will only grow because it crystallizes not just the question of where our tax dollars go, but whether we can trust our elected leaders to do the right thing. And the shouting is likely to get louder as Election Day nears, as it should. Someone has to decide how your tax dollars are spent. And ultimately, those public officials answer to you. For more information, log on to foxnews.com. And while you're online, send me an email and tell me what you think. The address is fncspecials at foxnews.com. And thank you for watching.